Welcome back to Fullerton College's Print 145 Variable Data Printing. This is Ben Kewitt, your instructor. Today we are picking back up for a second go at our typesetting business cards using XMPy Variable Data Integration Systems. That's a mouthful. Tonight we're going to look at using our data not just as a thing that gets put into a design, but as a trigger for things that can happen. We're going to use one of the greatest and oldest pieces of computer programming thinking, which is if then. We're going to tell it that if this is this, then do this. And if this is something else, then do something else. This is like we first talked about in our first meeting about if you're sending a friend to buy you lunch and you don't know what's on the menu, you say, well, if they have pickles, put pickles on the sandwich. If they have turkey, I like turkey. But if they have roast beef, I like it better. Those are if thens. Those are conditional statements. You make them your whole life. But now we're just going to have a computer do it for us instead of our friend at the sandwich shop. So let's take a look at our first one here. And we're also going to be working with styles. One of the things I've always loved about uh, InDesign is its ability to use styles where you can make a whole series of objects or text boxes or paragraphs or characters that all follow a style that you pre-set up and then can make changes to later that affect the global design, meaning all instances of that style are controlled through an automatic uh, style override. So we're going to play with that in this as well, because a combination of an if-then toggle and styles is pretty powerful when you're talking about variable data and being able to build adaptive dynamic documents. So here, let's take a look at this one. The first thing I'm doing is a little cheesy, but at least is visual for a video, right? So I've built some object styles. An object style contains all the attributes and visibilities and effects and colors that might be on, let me go ahead and turn this off on the gradient feather here, that's killing me. There we go. So anything that exists that is true about this rectangle I just drew can be made into a uh, style. The most basic thing, if you draw a new frame with nothing going on, it's gonna call it a basic graphics frame. And the basic graphics frame is invisible. It has no fill, it has no stroke, and has no other effects applied to it. It's a blank slate. I've built a few and I'll show you what I've done so far. I've made one that's blue, one that's green, one that's magenta, and one that's red. Super exciting, right? But at least it changes significantly so you can tell if it's working. So if I want to make a new one, uh, there's a couple ways to do it, but I'll show you my favorite. As you guys have uh, worked with me before in the past, you know that I'm a huge fan of what you see is what you get, WYSIWYG type work. I'm very happy to make something I like and then save it as a style. But there are those who can work the other way around and know the specifications of what they want and build a style blindly, flying by instruments, working by faith. Those people have my respect because that's beyond my abilities. I still do what I see and what's in front of me. So I'm going to take this. I'll just go ahead and change the fill to, I don't know, cyan's a good color. It's cyan. Hey, look at that. Now under my little object styles, let me pull this out for us and I'll hide the X and Pi for a moment, just so it's not confusing. There we go. Just kind of hide it on top. It's like my desk with things piled on top of things. Okay, so I select the one I've just made, and it says Blue Background Plus. And if you guys remember your other courses you've had with me where we do X and Pi, you know you can either apply a style or override a style or redefine a style, but we're going to make a new one. So we're going to go to the little hamburger menu up here in the palette, and we're going to tell it New Object Style. And we're going to call this, surprisingly, Cyan Background. I know. I'm so creative. So now we have a, we, uh, we've created it, but whatever it was when you made it, it still contains the old information. So I'd have to click on Cyan for it to become Cyan. It still wanted to be the blue background with changes. So we can see now that my styles are working. But let's see how we can make them work for you in an automated sense. I'm going to go ahead and put this away in the styles pile. Ooh, style pile, kind of like it. So we're going to open up our X and Pi you create menu here, and we're going to create a new content object. And we're going to call this background color, because again, I'm so creative with my naming. And my annotation for this one is going to be changes background, changes background graphic, based on state. 
I'm using state because it's easier to program. I'm going to be honest, guys. You could do this with anything, but the things you have to match to get more and more complicated. So let's take a look at this one. Again, this, or sorry, our type at the top though is going to be style. Scrolling left, it says apply style. But what we're going to do is we're going to say if state, where is state? Equals string California. Let's start with our own state. If state equals cal string, these letters, CA for California, then apply the style blue background. I'll supply none. That would be the most simple. But let me do a, a one with a few chains here because it's kind of fun to chain them. Else if, you can keep this going for a while and keep giving it extra things. So else if state equals, uh, what's another one I can think of off the top of my head? Arizona. We're going to go through all the ones I can remember without looking at the sheet. Then apply style. San. Oops, scrolled away. My bad. Sorry, guys. Else if state equals Louisiana. Then apply style green background. It is green there. Else if state equals string Georgia. I should have made a peach. I think the closest thing I have to that is magenta. Then apply the style magenta. And I'm going to stop before I get to red because this is going to take all night. So I'm going to say OK here. And it works. Now watch this. I'm going to select my little swoopy shape I made as my background here. And I'm going to apply the background color. Hey, it's green. And now it's not going to change every time. Some of them are going to be clear. This one is a state that no longer does not have one of those other ones in it. It's not one of the ones I called out. So the default is transparent unless you make it something. But as we scroll through, let me get in here and use my keyboard. You can see it'll switch between state and state. And we're going to get to something that's not blue or white eventually. There's a green one. There we go. There's a magenta one. See, um, unfortunately, there are still people from all 50 states in this one. So if you really wanted to program it all the way, you'd have to make 50 chaining variables. And you can do that. It's pretty exciting. You can make a very complicated if-then series. Else if, else if, else if. So we've got that. Now, let's play with paragraph and character styles for the next one. I also wanted to show you another fun little trick we can do with this. So I'm going to add one more thing down here. And uh, there'll be enough space for another line. I'm going to call this head office. Again, if I was really good at graphics, like I wish I was, I would be able to more or less do this in my head. Although, let's see if I can do it slightly in my head here. I would like this to be small caps. I would like this to be uh, medium. And I'd like it to space out a little bit. This is going to be the head office market. In fact, I'm going to let it be all lowercase. And at this point, I'm noticing that I think I'd rather make that black. There we go. That lets us know if they're from the main office. Now watch this fun little trick here. We'll make another new object, new content object. And we're going to call this head office. If city equals county, then head office. I always try to remind myself in the annotation what I'm doing so I don't get lost later. This is going to be text with style. I'm going to have to uh, come back to it in a moment as well because I forgot a key part here. So right here, we've made a style. Let's go ahead and select all this. And in fact, I'm going to make sure that this is actually set type. Um, change case, lowercase. There we go. With the small caps turned on, these will all be the smaller letters. I quite like the proportions of uppercase but lowercase small cap letters. They look really nice to me. Personally, I prefer them to true all caps. Uh, personal preference. You don't have to do exactly like this. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to select one of these and I'm going to go to window styles, character styles. 
And this one, I'm going to make a new one called, you guessed it, head office. And it's based off of, you'll notice when I click on the formats, it's based off of what I just made. So let's save that. Okay, cool. Glad we had this talk, right guys? There we go. So all these letters are going to have that. Now let's go and show you the real magic. I'll close this down and we're going to make a crazy little thing here. Let's re-edit this. So this is also based off my kind of theoretical logic that if you have an office from a chain of offices and they're all around a county, but you have one that's in the city that the county's named after, the great exception to this being Orange County, by the way, where Irvine would be the head office. But if you're in LA County and you're in the LA office in LA County, you're probably in the head office, right? Don't fight me on this. Yeah, I just needed a flimsy excuse to do this. So if city equals county, then value equals string head office, apply style head office, else value equals string nothing. That's it. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of this and we're going to make this head office and let's go back to one and we'll scroll around a bit till we find one that actually has it. You will see up oh, there's one. Lena Pop Paprocki. She works in the head office. I'd have to look up what city she's actually in since I didn't put her address on this card. But you can see that on hers, city equals county, therefore head office exists and the style that we chose has been placed. So hopefully this has opened your eyes up to some opportunities. The ability to create if then chains based off of data points that activate styles gives you a serious amount of conditional formatting. So as long as you're able to think of clever ways of having it adapt and change as it goes on on its own, there's not a lot of limitations to what you can do <clears throat> other than the data your customer gave you. Sorry to end on a downer, guys. Good luck. We'll talk soon.